everybody, it's Mark Volwe, Voltland Outdoors. We're doing two videos because the weather's so good and I need to catch up. Today's video was requested by some of my most recent subscribers. It's all about what does the anchoring under your chin actually look like, Mark? What does the anchoring under your chin actually look like, Mark? So this is gonna be a relatively short video. I practiced in the previous one just to see what the angles look like. But what we're gonna do is actually shoot at that particular bag right there using this new Sino Art, Jun Zing, J-U-N-X-I-N-G, um, takedown recurve bow is gonna, since I got it out here. And I'm gonna show you guys from a lot of different angles what this anchoring looks like. Let's get started. Okay. Okay, first shot, side view, you're gonna see it. I'm gonna be, I don't have much of a chin. That's why I have a beard. Make it look like I have a chin. I'm, you know, I'm your typical Welsh. We don't have a lot of chins in that country. Um, there's dead center. I, I'm like right there under my chin. And this knuckle, not the first digit, the second digit. Why? Because the first digit needs to hinge. It needs to be able to release. So I need the second digit to anchor underneath there like this. Hard. Why? Because then the first digit can actually hinge and let go. So this stays connected to my chin. Why do I do that? Why do I not float like this? Because floating introduces error, guys. It's jumping all around. There's no denying it. So if you want, uh, if you want a small motion release that's stable and reproducible, anchor that knuckle right here, right there, right on your right on your chin, hard. Like you don't want anybody to pull it off. Then you can actually hinge like this, and you get as small a motion release as you're probably ever going to get out of your hand. Let's see what that looks like. Knocking an arrow. Getting really close to you guys. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, anchor under your chin. You see that right there? You couldn't pull my hand off if you wanted to. Step three, look down the left edge of the bowstring. Step four, tip the arrow on the target. Step five, small motion release. Everything stays here. No flamboyant nonsense like this. If you're moving like this way, the bowstring's moving that way. If you're moving that way even a little bit, the bowstring's moving this way. If you're moving even this way a little bit, the bowstring's moving that way. You're introducing error. So what's the secret? Don't introduce error. Small motion release. Doink. 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 Let's shoot another one and then change angles. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, anchor under your chin. Step three, step three, look down the left side of the bowstring. Step four, tip the arrow on the target. Step five, small motion release. That was two inches right of dead center on that shot, just so you know. And notice my arm, it didn't move. This was still hung on here, You're on this corner. It's not really like this. You're looking at that target. It's turned sideways and your body is sideways and you're turned looking at the target. Let's change direction and you're gonna see it from over there. Here's a new angle where you guys are getting, I'm gonna to try to get as close as I can for you. And I want you to watch. That part of my knuckle is right there. Ooh. My body is turned sideways to the target. My head is turned at about about a 45 degree angle away from the target. I'm looking at the target, 45 degrees, and my eyes are looking at the target now. That's what it looks like. You're not looking at the target, you're looking 45 degrees away and you're looking over the bridge of your nose right here. If you were the target, what I'm seeing right now as I look at the target is like if you are my target and I'm looking at you, I'm looking right over the bridge of my nose with the one eye 
let's try it again. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, draw back under your chin and anchor under your chin. You see that, my elbow is up high. I can hold this pose with 42 pounds for a while. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Four, tip of the arrow on the target. Five, small motion release. Arm stays here. You'll notice my arm is actually fully flexed. It's not partially flexed. That when I let go, it wants to come out like this. It's already fully flexed. So when I let go, there's no extra motion in my arm. It's not pulling back like this. Everybody gets that wrong. Some of my detractors, they all say, oh, it doesn't look like your arm's fully engaged, which means when you let go, your arm's gonna go like that. Did you guys see that? No. And I'm two inches below dead center on my, on my arrow. Let's do one more from this arrow, from this angle. <clears throat> Always get your flexings exactly consistent. That's why arrow knocks are not glued in, so you can make these adjustments. You want the arrow flight to always be the same for every arrow. You control that. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, anchor under your chin. Now I want you to watch how my fingers look. Can you guys see that? My fingers, my fingers are just on this side of that, that uh, joint. They're just on the fingertip side so that I can release easily, not hooking. Hope that made sense. Let's get in here again. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, anchor under your chin. You see that anchor? Watch my elbow and see if it jumps back on release. Step three, look down the left side of the bowstring. Four, tip there on the target. Five, small motion release. My arm, my body went like this. It's under load, but my arm didn't fly back. I've got two more arrows. What else can I show you? From down ang down here looking up. Let's change angles. Okay, last two arrows, you're gonna get right underneath me and you're gonna see this part of the knuckle right here, getting engaged on that part, making actual hard contact with that part of my chin. Ugh, like that. So hard you couldn't like, you know, your, your wife couldn't pull your hand off your arm. No, it's not that hard, guys. You got to be able to hinge, but it is making solid contact. It's not making light contact. It's making solid contact with that elbow up. Let's put two more in. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, anchor under your chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the bowstring. Step four, put the tip of the arrow on the target. Step five, small motion release. One inch above dead center. Last one. Step one, choose your, step one, choose your gap. Step two, anchor under your chin. This hand's not moving anywhere, guys, not moving anywhere. Step three, look down the left edge of the bowstring. Four, tip of the arrow on the target. Five, small motion release. The elbow stayed in place. I hope you guys found that useful. Watch my other video on this new Sino art, this Jun Zing takedown recurbo for only 104 bucks. I am terribly impressed with that. I hope you guys had asked about what does this anchor look like? How does this all work? I hope this answered your question, but I'm open to feedback. Tell me if it works for you, let me know, and we'll see you out there. Bye. Cut.